What's going on everybody? So I thought it would be really interesting if we did a video out of the ordinary. You know, when it comes to building high quality race engines, there's a lot that goes into it. So I kind of wanted to do a behind the scenes look over at DB shop of what all goes into developing a cylinder head port. And we're gonna show the basics of getting started by using this flow bench and I know you look on the internet and flow numbers can be very controversial, but I'm gonna show you what I use and you can't go wrong. And that's DV's IOP program. So to find out more details about that, head over to David Vizard Performance and take a look at his program. And if it's something that you're interested in, you can come and be a part of one of his seminars. But let's get started on this flow test and I'm gonna show you what all we gotta do. One of the things that you gotta do when you're flowing cylinder heads is pay attention to the fixture that you're using to bolt the head on. A lot of times companies will quote high CFM numbers and that could be due to using a bore that's bigger. So what happens is it makes the cylinder head unshrouded thus flowing more air so if you're using in our like in our case a 4030 bore you need to use a 4030 fixture that way that you know you're getting the right numbers okay the first thing we do when we start flow testing cylinder heads is actually cc the intake port and exhaust port why do we do that because it's going to give us an indication of the port energy that's developed in this so and you know you can have good cfm numbers but we're also after port velocity so those two things are key factors when it comes to making power but if you want to find out more check out that iop program but right now i'm going to finish this up and then we're going to get this thing on the flow bench Okay, so we've already finished up CCing our intake and exhaust runners. So now I'm going to give you a little bit of background about this cylinder head. These cylinder heads are very early trick flow twisted wedge uh, deal. And you can tell it still has the as cast chambers. Um, you know, this thing has some battle scars from previous use, but we're going to base basically. Uh, turn this head back into brand new. Uh, Eric Castor is building a 393 cubic inch Windsor and so he wanted to get an idea of his porting of how good it was and so I suggested to him that I bring it down here to DV shop and let's put it through David's IOP program and so you know that the first step of this procedure is getting the volume of the port so next thing i'm going to do is measure the face of the ports at the opening so that we can put those calculations into the program as well for both the intake and exhaust once i finish that i will measure the actual length of the runner and i will show you how i do that as well okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to measure the port face at the opening Okay, that is 2165, right there, the uh, height and the width is 1.38. So we will put those measurements into the program and go from there. So next, we're going to determine how long this port is okay so you might be asking yourself how do we measure the actual length of the runner itself well DV showed me this trick quite some time back you find a simple piece of wire or solder or anything that you can 
mold and shape very easily such as this right here you can go to any hobby short uh, hobby store and get what's called hobby wire and basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the first step is bring the wire to the bottom to the edge of the port face okay and then you're going to mold it to the floor of the port itself out to where the seat is at okay once you have that straighten the wire out okay then we're going to measure and see what we came up with on that okay in this instance we're looking at around 3700 for the bottom floor okay so now we're going to do the same thing except for we're going to do the top of the roof of the port so once again take your wire come right here to the edge of the port face okay and then you're going to push the wire and make sure that it's perfectly flat throughout push it down into the bowl and once again work it out to the actual valve seat itself once you have that straighten the wire out again take your calipers and then measure the length of that as well okay and it looks like we're around 5.640 so what you do is you take the two measurements that we have taken here, add them together and divide by two, and that'll give you the port length. So we will put that figure into the IOP program and let it do it, let it do its magic. Well folks, you just finished up watching part one of two of flow bench testing. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into getting a cylinder head ready to go on the flow bench. You know, the one thing that I want to put emphasis on is, you know, there's a lot of people out there who have their own ways of doing things. And I'm not saying that their ways are right or wrong, but I'm telling you that our ways and using David's IOP program has produced killer results you know, the results speak for themselves. You know, you can look up uh, on Terry Walter's Racing Engines channel, some of the big blocks that David has built, you know, has just been phenomenal. Anytime that you can make a street engine, you know, with say 10 and a half to one compression, make over 1.4 foot pounds per cubic inch, you know that that is a well sorted out combination. You're getting into the territory of where the guys from the engine masters competition get into so you know most average street builds fall somewhere into 1.2 to 1.25 foot pounds per cube but if you really want to stand out from the rest you know take a look at this program and i promise you you will not be disappointed so in the next series you'll see the flow bench in action and until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports. Catch you later.